Hi, I'm Lee Schneider, Communications Director at Red Cup Agency, and I'm thrilled to invite Colleen Barr to the webinar today. Colleen is a rights evangelist for ACX, which is a subdivision of Audible and an Amazon company. She works with rights holders, such as authors, publishers, agents, to help them create great audiobooks. So welcome, Colleen. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. This is really exciting because we really have a chance in this half hour to get into some deep how-to, and you're very knowledgeable. And I did an audiobook recently, so I can speak from personal experience. So let's get started. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you some questions. It's a Q&A format, everybody who's listening to this. I'll give you the quick agenda here. Uh, I encourage everyone to chat in. There's a little chat window there, and we may not stop in the middle of our flow to answer those questions, but we will answer those questions at the end. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to look at the market landscape for audiobooks, the audiobook consumer habits, as we call it, uh, and we'll get a sense of why you should do one. Uh, importantly, we're going to ask, is your book right for audio? Uh, Colleen knows a lot about that. She knows about the market. It tracks yeah. into the market idea. Uh, and this question matters, whether you have a book that you want to adapt or want to create one with audio in mind. Mm -hmm. ACX is the platform yeah. used for creating your audio book, and I had a great experience with it. So that's why I decided to do this and invite Colleen as the expert. So, Colleen, I know you're raring to go. Uh, <laughs> I am. Let's talk about why audiobooks uh, and give us some stats and tell us about the market now. Okay, so um, Audible's been in business for over 20 years. Um, we are now really hitting our stride. There's so many people, I think due to, you know, we've been here for a while and producing audiobooks, but the audio listening market is really expanding because of podcasts. Um, people are used to listening to audio while they're in their car on the way to work, um, while they're, you know, at home relaxing or just doing any kind of thing where you're multitasking. And so now people are really listening to audiobooks plus too. Everyone has cell phones and things like that. So it's just a perfect time for this kind of content. Right. It's, a, it's kind of on the go consumption of media uh, yeah. driven, of course, by platforms. Uh, you you mm -hmm. can talk in detail about this, about why we see this line going up and to the right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when you look at this, um, it's kind of small um, for those that are viewing this right now. Um, but I understand, Lee, you're going you're gonna to show them the deck. Yeah, we're going to share the deck. Okay, so when you're looking at this deck here, you're looking from uh, – the Audible started um, out releasing our own audio player in 1998, um, and the, the, the bar here starts from right around there. And you see we haven't sold that many books yet, but then the iPod was released in 2001, and we, we start gaining traction. Smartphones gained ground in 2006. And the bar just really starts going up from there. And as you can see, um, with 2015, we're huge compared to where we are when we started out. And this this graph in particular here shows worldwide sales. So Audible, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Audible has a business in um, you know the U.S., U.K., Germany, France, Australia, and now Japan. So um, you know when you when you publish your, we'll get into this a little bit later, but when you publish your audiobook through ACX. It goes live for sale as long as you have world rights in all these different markets. And so, um, you know, we're just expanding like crazy with no signs of stopping down. Yeah. Down. Uh, yeah and it's, it's also pretty seamless, which we'll talk about later, too. The production process is really easy and right. the money gets deposited in my account from royalties. I don't really do mm -hmm. anything, which is kind of a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We take care of it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nice. If <laughs> anybody wants to make this deck look bigger now there's a button kind of in the middle of your screen called full with two arrows if you press that the slide deck will expand it'll push away some of the other stuff you're looking at but if you just want a bigger picture for now and like colleen said i will be posting this entire deck later you'll be able to peruse it so let's go to the next thing which is is my book right now we're going to discuss this at length with my audiobook producer. I made a recording for you. I'm going to post that up here on the Big Marker platform and also on YouTube. But let's let Colleen now lead us through what works and what doesn't work in the audiobook format. And we'll relate that back to startups, entrepreneurs, and business mm -hmm. people, because I know that that's the primary audience here. So okay. here is the super detailed guide of what doesn't work. So Colleen, you can take 
mm -hmm. get away here and what this is all about. So if so, thank you. Thanks, Lee. I'm glad to. Um, so when you look at this slide, um, you'll see as we as you go through it, what doesn't work well in audio are reference books, books about home and garden, children's books, um, cookbooks, comic books. So basically, the main theme there is that anything that is visually oriented. Um, audiobook is obviously, um, you know, an audio medium. Um, and the best type of audiobook that you can create are ones that do not need the, the listener, does not, the listener who's actually bought your book does not need to stop the book, pause it, and refer to something else in order to understand what you're saying. Um, the, in print, plenty of, you know, there's lots of times where you need to refer to a graph or something like that or a picture in order for the, the reader to get the idea and they can take the time to flip the page or just, you know, dart their eyes over to there. But for audio, the best experience is one where somebody can just listen straight through, get the picture of exactly what you're trying to say. That said, if you, if you are creating, you know, especially in the business sector, sometimes you're going to need to refer to guides. Um, we can help you if you need to refer to those things. Our support team is great. They can advise you on how best to do that. Um, so we're not trying to discourage you from creating your audiobook if it does rely somewhat on visuals. Um, but if you have a book that really mostly is a photography book or something like that, it's not going to be a great audio experience for your customers. <laughs> right. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing, and I, I talk about this uh, in my talk, when I talk to Daniel Kwan, the producer. There were sections in my book where mm -hmm. I said, take a look at this chart. And I realized, oh, yeah. wait, <laughs> there's no chart. You can't look at that. Or as you'll yeah. see yeah. in the paragraph above, well, there's no above. You know, so there right. are <laughs> things that you need to adapt, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, in a situation like that, and I'm sure you came up against this, the, what you would do if you have a lot of charts or graphs or something like that, you would just say, please refer to this chart. And then you can send the support team a PDF of your, um, you know, your visual right. aid, and they can right. attach it to the audiobook so that when the customer purchases it, they have access to that. But the listening experience shouldn't be, um, you may have to change a couple words just so that they can keep listening. Exactly. You know, That's what I'm getting at. It's a little mm -hmm. adaptation. Not a lot, but some, because you just have to yeah. think in the format. Uh, let's get back to this, the whole market discussion here, and you can walk us through this chart. What are we looking at here? So um, when you see this, and, and um, for those listening, um, it's also small um, here. And also, too, um, so when you, when you get a chance to look at it bigger or to enlarge it, you'll see that what we have is a list of genres here. And we really condensed it. Um, you know, going across the top, we have um, mysteries and thrillers. Um, we have, um, you know, science fiction and fantasy, teen fiction, romance. Somewhere around the middle, we have business, bios, and memoirs. Um, and self-development. Um, so what we're talking about here, obviously these are not all the genres that exist, um, you know, in when you're talking about books. Um, but we're what we're talking about here is the things that sell great on Audible.com. And this, even though this bar across is mysteries and thrillers and the other um, business and self-development is halfway down, I want you to know that on ACS, the top, our top sellers are consistently um, business self-development and uh, bios and memoir. People are selling like gangbusters. Um, if you really get into the psychology of uh, somebody who is an entrepreneur, they really do great in audio because those are the sorts of people, you know, you understand who are busy. They're trying to get a lot done. They're trying to cram a lot of information, learn very quickly. And audio is a great medium for that because you can multitask doing what you need to do and listen to the audio book. I think that's what really um, makes it a successful type genre of book in mm -hmm. audio. And also, when if you're a, a startup founder, if you're an entrepreneur starting a business, mm -hmm. You're probably, if you're going to write a book, it's probably going to be mm -hmm. a bio or a memoir or a right. version of self-development. I mean, one of the, one mm -hmm. of the great early startup books was the one about Patagonia, which, you know, the great mm -hmm. outdoor equipment company, and it was part memoir, part how to start a company like that. I think that lessons learned when you are starting your business and uh, your understandings of how to do it are pretty important for, for others right. to learn. So yeah. if you're looking to create some thought leadership material, which is mm -hmm. when clients come to us, you know, we're writing a couple of eBooks for clients. I hope they'll be turned right. into audiobooks. We do sometimes blogs mm -hmm. for clients. A lot of those things are the buzzword 
thought leadership materials, meaning yeah. they're positioning that company, that person, that startup in the minds of a market, in the minds of people. Mm -hmm. So, right. but luckily, if you frame it right, uh, it's going to be a best-selling audiobook. Right, and you know, the thing is, um, Celia and I were discussing this a little bit yesterday. Um, when you, you know, when you're, think about it like this, when you're training someone to do something, you're reminded of your own knowledge, you're reaffirming your own knowledge and skill set, right? And so when you're an entrepreneur, you're, you're on a learning curve where you have to learn from other people who are experts at doing certain things. Then you suddenly get to a point where you know how to do things and people are coming to you for advice, right? And it becomes, prudent to write it down, write a book, and so that you can provide it to other people to give the, you know, to share the level of experience that you have in that specific thing. But when you do that, you're also realizing how far you've come with your own knowledge, and you're becoming the expert yourself. What's more is you're taking the knowledge that you've gained and you're creating a product that you can, you know, an intellectual property that you can now sell to other people. It's a, it's a stream of income and it's another branch to your entrepreneur. Right. It has kind of a, so, uh, something yeah, there's a, there's a soft benefit and a hard money benefit. You get royalties, yeah. you mm -hmm. get paid and you also yeah. um, are out there getting known. I mean, I was telling you this story yesterday where since I wrote a book about the LA startup scene, somebody right. found me on Twitter who publishes the British Airways in-flight magazine, and they asked me to write an article <laughs> about startups in L.A. for that magazine, which I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and great. they found it's probably through the Amazon books and probably through the audio books. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't ask them. They just right. found me. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a bit about that's kind of just to go over what we just talked about. You know, that's kind of the conceptual mm -hmm. stuff. Is my book right? How, you know, how do mm -hmm. I get my toe in the water here? Now we're going to change a little bit and get into real how-to stuff and this idea of rights. Now, if you're a published author, you already know about rights. You've given the publisher certain mm -hmm. rights, you've retained certain rights. But if you have never done this before, Colleen's going to walk us through what you give and what you get. And big caveat here, we're not lawyers. We're not going to negotiate a deal for you. We're not your agent. Yeah. But Colin is very knowledgeable about what, you know, what's involved in the the copyright, you know, the material and the rights that you're granting. So why don't you take it away here and dig into that? Sure. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, was, I mentioned intellectual property. When you write a book, that is your intellectual property. It belongs to you. Um, Especially, you know, once you sell it, you have the ISBN, it's your, it's your content. When you have a piece of intellectual property that you've created, like a book, you can make money off of it in a bunch of different ways, right? You have the ebook, you have the rights to the ebook, you have the rights to the um, print book, you have the rights to the TV rights, film rights, and the audiobook rights. Those are all different rights that exist for that particular intellectual property. Now, if you have never contact the publisher whatsoever, you own all of your rights. That's the, that sounds obvious, but I want to make it clear because the other thing is if you have sold your, you know, if you've worked with a, a traditional publisher or even if you self-published the ebook, you've only, if you self-published the ebook, you've, you're only concerned with the ebook, right? Rights. But check your contract if you self-published to make sure that you didn't give away the audio rights. If you've worked with a traditional publisher, Check your contract because you may have bundled your audiobook rights with your print rights. Um, if you haven't, um, that well, you have to before you can start with ACX. The bottom line is you need to know where your rights are. Do you hold them or just somebody else? If you don't know and you've worked with a publisher, check your contract. If you have signed them away, ask for them back. The, or you know because they may not exercise on those rights to create an audiobook you have an opportunity with ACX to do it yourself, right? And a lot of times publishers will be, um, you know, they'll, they'll give them back to you. You just have to have that conversation with them. Um, once you know you have your rights, whether you've had them reverted to you or you've never sold them at all, you can start on ACX today. You can create an account and you can claim the rights, search for your book, claim the rights to it, and start a project. Yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, detailed way of looking at it and good. Mm -hmm. I had, in the case of my experiences, I wrote fresh books. I opened up the laptop. Mm -hmm. I wrote a brand new book, published it yep. straight away on Amazon. 
I could decide mm -hmm. what I wanted to do with the rights. So that is the easiest scenario yeah. and probably right. the scenario of many people. You know, you just say, yeah. I'd like to do this. You do, in order to do the audio book though, you have to get an Amazon book out first, which we'll talk about. Yeah. It can be an ebook. Yeah. Uh, for mm -hmm. those of us who have written books and you pluck your book off the shelf and say, hey, this looks good. I bet I could get this into audio. A different story. You know, that's what Colleen was alluding to. You have to mm -hmm. look at your contract and see yeah. what you've given, what you, and you know, mm -hmm. just to be clear, you know, the book is always yours. You're not giving anything away, but mm -hmm. you do make deals. Yeah. You know, when you receive money for writing a book, you've made a deal. And usually yeah. the deal is you've given some rights to a publisher which mm -hmm. may be forever, may be in certain territories, mm -hmm. may be in certain media. So you have to kind of sort all through that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, now on to the simple and fun stuff, which is the actual experience. Uh, I had a great mm -hmm. experience with ACX. I just found it incredibly easy to find a good producer and get my book recorded. By the way, it's called Be More Popular, Culture Building for Startups. Mm -hmm. It's available uh, as an ebook as a Kindle, a uh, Kindle book rather, as a paperback and now an audio book. And we'll talk about this in detail in a sec on the next slide here, but basically I uploaded a short audition piece for producers, producer narrators, and I had people read it and they read it, you know, they mm -hmm. sent me audio files and I listened to the people, decided who I, who I thought sounded the most, the right fit for the book. And then mm -hmm. we got into it. Now, uh, Colleen's going to break out the actual process a little bit more, but there is one amazing thing which not a lot of people know is you can actually do this with a zero upfront cost if you want to. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I made a deal with the producer narrator and I, you know, we're, we're getting, we're splitting the royalties basically, but I didn't have to mm -hmm. pay. You can pay upfront if you want to and Colleen mm -hmm. will talk about that, but yeah, we'll get into here's that. how it works. So she can break down the exact stuff. So for ACX, um, you can, you're, like it says on here, you're totally in control um, as the rights, what we call the rights holder, meaning that you're the author or the publisher or the agent, and you will hold the rights to this audiobook. Um, you can do one of two different things. Um, we have, um, the way that most people normally do it is they post the rights to their book on ACX, and then they hire a narrator through the site. Um, colloquially, we refer to the narrator as the producer because when you hire a narrator on ACS, they will they are responsible for narrating and doing the complete audio editing of your audiobook, um, meaning they're going to give you a completed pro product once they're done with it. And you just have to listen to it, review it, send edits, and approve. Um, the other thing that you can do, say you want to self-narrate, say you know a narrator, say you have an audio engineer that you want to work with. We have a DIY functionality where you can also upload all your own audio for it to go up through ACS. Either way you choose to go, um, once you approve the audio and you submit it to ACS, go through quality assurance, then um, our team makes sure that it fits, you know, that everything is um, to audio, audible standards for audiobooks, then it goes live for sale on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. So it's... Um, it's a simple process because everything is done through the site and you are completely in control of hiring what narrator you want and the, um, the quality level of the audio that you look to. It's pretty cool. I have to say it's, it's a very smooth process and you can ask for do-overs within reason. Example, when Dan was narrating my book and I talk about this in the interview I do with him, which I'll post up here a little later, we, uh, we, he mispronounced a name or two, or I felt that that sentence, mm -hmm. the way he said it was a little rushed or a little unclear. So mm -hmm. I asked for a do-over of uh, a short section. It's posted chapter by chapter, piece by piece. So you listen to each MP3 file and I made notes and he, mm -hmm. and, and all producers would do this, would do a couple of do-overs to get it up to the quality you need it. Uh, I'm a, in some ways a terrible client because as a longtime documentary mm -hmm. producer, I've directed a bazillion voiceover section, sessions. So, mm -hmm. you know, I told that to Daniel and I'm sure he groaned quietly thinking, oh no, I have this <laughs> guy. But, you know, I, I did have a certain quality standard to meet, which he met. You know, we, we just mm -hmm. had to do a few do-overs. The value too of having a producer figure is he produces, he does everything. You know, yeah. all I did was mm -hmm. provide material, 
provide a critique of the material. Mm -hmm. He put it all together. The platform built it, you know, glued the pieces together. And I took, I made some cover art. The cover art I just adapted in size and shape from the existing Kindle cover art. So the production side, since I had already published the book on Kindle, for me was, ooh, you know, easy as pie. Didn't have to do much, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and to answer that, you know, when you are, um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit on the next slide too, like yeah. how you get started, but a, a, a key thing to think about is um, when you're posting, the best thing you can do for yourself and your own audiobook project and for the narrator that you hire as well is to give them as much information as possible about this book. Um, you know, if it's something, um, one thing that we recommend, I know that I'm speaking to um, mostly a, a business crowd who is going to do nonfiction books, but even whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you're going to want to create, you're going to want to create a, what we call a title profile um, that has your, it's going to have your publisher summary and everything like that. We pull that over from Amazon, but you're going to fill in fields about your audiobook to tell them what it's really about, not the professional publisher summary, but to give them actually an idea of what this book is, what your intent is, your marketing plans for this book. Maybe even like some people have had a lot of success with here are all the characters or here are the, here is the, here's the narrator of the book, you know, um, who's speaking for me in this book. This is what I think that they'll sound like. Maybe even think of an actor that you think that you would want the voice to sound like to give them an idea. You don't, you're not asking them to ape that actor exactly, but you're giving them an idea on how you want the, this end result to be. Um, give them an audition sample that has it's two to three pages long that has, um, you know, different sections from the book that if you have different voices within that book or you have different ways that you want things to be pronounced or something like that, make them say in the audition so you know exactly how this actor, this narrator is going to perform in a nimble way that really gets you the audio book product that you want and minimizes edits later on. Yeah. It's really going to great, create a great experience for you and the producer. That's all great advice. It's so much when someone is narrating something or speaking something, they have to sound like they believe in it. And they have to sound like they understand it. Yeah. And if you can fake those two mm -hmm. things, you're a genius. But most people can't <laughs> fake it. Most people really are interested in it or, ha or their voice conveys an understanding of what mm -hmm. they're talking about, whether it's the fictional story, the character, or a business book. So yep. Daniel and I back and forth a lot about that, you know, and that is mm -hmm. a lot of what you're trying to prepare the producer for. It helps if yep. you can help the producer do his or her homework and they do their homework, it's a first pass, you know, you, it goes really fast and goes right. smoothly. But everyone has to have, mm -hmm. just like Colleen said, a deep understanding of really what are we getting at here? What is this book about and mm -hmm. who are these guys? Yeah. So here, and since believe and believe me too, they want to. I, I've talked to a lot of producers in my time. I mostly work with, um, uh, you know, authors and rights holders now, but I've talked to a ton of narrators. And the number one thing they want to do is make the author happy. Right. <laughs> they want you to be just as thrilled with the audiobook, you know, as they are. They want everyone to be proud of it. Yeah. So. The, the biggest no you, I've often given is more energy. Now, what does that mean? You know, like mm -hmm. it. It really pretty much means that. You're interested in what you're talking about. Uh, you're not mm -hmm. trying to talk fast. You're not trying to sound fake excited, you know, because that is, you can't mm -hmm. listen to that for a long time. But mm -hmm. if you can show interest in your voice mm -hmm. and what you're talking about, it, rel it creates energy, uh, kind of an energetic mm -hmm. feeling. And that's what people like listening to, no, you know, and also and you want to listen to, oh, yeah, sure, you want to, um, you want to be able to listen to that person for a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a voice mm -hmm. can be unique and weird and crazy and interesting, but can I listen to that? Could I do my commute with that person? <laughs> right. And, 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 you know, the, a point that I want to, to make to any author that um, would go work on ACS, um, really take your time. Um, a lot of, you know, people, they get excited and they want to rush mm -hmm. in, they want to find someone real quick and get started. But ideally, any author you don't think, no one really thinks I'm going to write this one book and then I'm going to stop and I'm never going to write another one again. You know, mm -hmm. I, hopefully you're like, I'm going to write one, then I'm going to write another, and I'm going to write another, right? If you think of it from the listener experience, um, they love it when they're reading 
an, listening to an author, and it's the same voice, right? So you may be, you, you may want to write a series of books, right? And the customer, it's going to be jarring if you have all different narrators, right? So when you're hiring someone on ACX, just try to think high level, like, I may be building a relationship with this person that will last from book to book to book. And so I really want to take my time auditioning narrators until I can find the right person that not only does their voice represent what I want it to, would I be able to listen to this? Um, do I like this person? Are they responsive? And are we going to have a great working relationship together, you know? Um, and it really have, we invite you to, and pr producers love it for you to email them ahead of time, spark a conversation, and really talk it out. We have a messaging system through um, directly on ACX. So you can initiate these conversations and really figure out this great partnership as you go forward. And you're going to have a really great experience on ACS. Yeah, definitely. So here's a look. We're looking at kind of this, the, what you need to bake the cake uh, and starting with a published book mm -hmm. for sale on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Oh, <clears throat> so what here it says, um, you know, we need a, a published book. You need the audio book rights and you need a manuscript and cover art. So, like Lee said, um, in order for you to, to get started with a project on ACS, your book needs to be for sale on Amazon in the book section. So, whether it's an ebook or a print book, doesn't matter. If it's in the book section on Amazon, when you go to search for your book on ACS to start your project, you'll see it there. If it's not, start there first, get the ebook or the print book up, and then start on your um, audiobook project. Um, <clears throat> that said, you should also know whether or not, like we discussed previously, um, whether or not you have the rights to your book before you start on ACX. And the manuscript, I touched on this a little bit. When, when you have your complete, you have your completed manuscript, and when you're creating the title profile on ACX, it's going to ask you for the, the uh, audition manuscript. The best thing you can do is create a two to three page section of your manuscript. Like I said, that's not, it doesn't have to be two to three pages consecutive. Give your, give your narrators a few different sections of the book. If there's a few different characters, give them a few different characters. And even if there's something that's kind of um, racy or, you know, maybe going to be um, polarizing, put that in the, the manuscript because there, you, if you're going to, if you're going to write something that is potentially going to offend people, that's fine. But you want to connect with a narrator who also believes in your work and who is happy to do the work too. Um, you don't want them to do half the book and then go this bumps up against my thoughts, you know, or me as a person and then quit the project, you know, right. <laughs> or something like that. You know, you want, you want them to be signed on and ready to go. So, um, that's my best advice. And then for the cover art, um, when you post your title for auditions, you'll see that we pull your cover art over and it, it'll be there so they can reference it. But if you go and search around on Audible's website, you'll see all the cover art is a square. It's the way that Audible represents, you know, the differentiation in the market. This is an ebook versus this is an audiobook. Um, so you will need to edit um, the, we have the specifications on the site. You just need to have the cover art ready to make an edit to it yeah. to fit our specs. Mm -hmm. Those are all the pieces. Uh, the also amazing thing that you get is a distribution system. Uh, once the book is put up there, it goes out on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so when you um, when you work with ACX, um, we distribute your audiobooks to through these three channels. Um, like we said, we are an Audible. You know, we we are an Audible company. We're owned by Amazon as well. And we will distribute your audiobook through Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. Now, you can choose to do two different things. You can choose to do an exclusive deal with ACS or a non-exclusive deal. In both ways, we're going to distribute through these same three channels, which are the largest sellers of audiobooks, these three channels. Um, it, either way, whether you do exclusive or non, it's going to be a seven-year contract that renews year to year. Um, and you can let us know after those seven years if you want to continue or discontinue. That's up to you. Um, and uh, if you do the exclusive contract, of course, you're saying that you will allow us to exclusively distribute through those three channels on your behalf. If you're going to do non-exclusive, you're going to allow us to do that, but you also reserve the right to sell it elsewhere. 
Right here, we'll get into this too. I want to mention too, we're going to run a little long today. If anyone has to bail out, not to worry, I will post the recording so you'll be able to catch up on the rest of this. Uh, this is probably a card best looked at later, uh, and I will post mm -hmm. the deck. But this echoes what Colleen was just saying. You can, there's various ways that you could set this up that give you cost versus earnings set up. You know, I happen to do the zero, I went exclusive. Uh, and I had a zero upfront cost. That was my choice. But mm -hmm. I could have done any of these other things in the grid. Yeah, um, I just want to speak to it for a second. Um, just so you guys know that, you know, like I said, with the exclusive distribution, you can choose to do what we call a royalty share deal where you don't put upfront money and you pay the producer. You split your earning with the producer. Um, they earn when you earn. Books sell. And we pay you both based on every month based on the, the books that you sell during that month. If you don't want to split your royalties, we recommend, you know, you do the pay for production deal. Um, you wouldn't have to split your royalties. You would pay them. It takes um, a producer approximately six hours to create one hour of finished audio. Um, so you're going to pay them a per finished hour rate based on the length of the audio book. So if you pay them, like here we say it's negotiable, um, but the standard is between one and four hundred dollars per finished hour. If you have a six hour long book and you're paying them a hundred dollars per finished hour, you would pay them six hundred dollars before the book goes into quality assurance um, so that they get paid for their work. Um, if you do the non-exclusive option, you um, have to do pay for production. There isn't a royalty share feature. So there are a lot of options here, which I think is great, you know, yeah. and I can't say enough that the platform does a lot of the heavy lifting. There's a way to communicate, yeah. there's a way to audition, mm -hmm. there's a way to back and forth, and all the clips go up. You can view, listen to them at your leisure, give comments. Mm -hmm. The platform is really great. I've looked at a lot of platforms with a lot of glitches. This is great. It actually works. <laughs> uh, you, Thank you. have been around and it works. So that is our... Yeah, everyone... Go ahead. I was, I was going to say, everyone, if you want, um, you without even creating a, an account today, you could go on to our site and uh, to acx.com, and it says on the top right, search. You can look at um, producers for hire or titles open for auditions, and you can search what it looks like when a title is open for auditions, what a title profile looks oh, like, what type of information yeah. we're asking. And you can also listen to narrator samples to see what exactly it looks like and what kind of, you know, and you can see there's a search bar on the side that you can um, narrow your selections down. So I encourage everyone to do that today just just to see what we're about. Yeah, that's a great idea. They've, you've also made this nice link for me, uh, which you can use yeah. this link if you wanted to, but acx.com is where you want to be, or you could use that mm -hmm. breakup agency link. Yeah. Uh, as we're wrapping up here, if there's anyone has any chat questions to pop into the chat window, that would be great. We'll answer them. We'll leave a little time for that. If you have questions later, uh, you can post them. The Big Marker platform has kind of a Facebook-esque interface where you can just post this stuff in the bulletin, and either I or Colleen will answer those a little bit later. Yep. So I know you guys are thinking of those questions. I want to thank everyone. Uh, <laughs> There'll be a recording here posted, as I said earlier, of this whole webinar and some bonus materials. If you haven't listened to my conversation with Daniel Kwan, the producer of my audiobook, I will be posting that up as well. Uh, Ahmed is asking, do you have any other kind of relatable success stories about, you know, great stories of people who put this together on the platform? Oh, like people who have used ACI yeah. successfully, the mm -hmm. some success stories? Yeah. Um, oh, if you look on the ACX blog, we have plenty of examples of people who have, um, you can, it's on blog.acx.com. Um, you'll see that we have all different types of authors who have used our site. Um, if you go on there, um, like, um, like Josh Kaufman, um, Hugh Howie, um, Scott Stigler. There's lots of people who have used ACX, um, to great success and who are doing really awesome on it. So um, I recommend you check it out and check out that uh, check out our blog anyway, just to get another sense of what you know what we do mm -hmm. and what we recommend. But there's plenty of great tips mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I have to say, I had a good time with it. So that's wrapping things up for today. We'll hang around for a few minutes if anyone has any chat questions. 
Colleen, thanks so much for joining me today. No, no this was fun. Uh, this is a webinar series presented by Red Cup. It's presented once a month. And since you're already signed up on the Big Marker platform, you'll be notified about the next one when it comes up. We brew them up about once a month, sometimes extras and bonuses. So thank you, everyone, for coming today. And thank you, everyone, for listening on the recording if you're listening later. I'm Lee Schneider, Communications thank Director so at Red Cup Agency. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're gonna we'll, we're gonna quit the recording now and uh, hang out for a moment or two. I might mute my mic, okay. but if anyone has any questions, we'll be here for a moment or two. Cool.